Hello everybody, Paul from Avalon Accounting here. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to build your own cash flow forecasting template in Google Sheets. So that's gonna be the first part of this video in 10 minutes or less. I'll show you step-by-step step exactly how to build that out. Uh, much less than 10 minutes if you put me at 1.5 or two times speed. And then the second half of this video, I will show you actually how to use our Avalon built template for cash flow forecasting. And if you look down in the description below, you'll find a link that will take you to the article version of this, where there'll be a form. You can add your name and email address, and we'll send you a link to download your own copy of that Avalon built cash flow forecast. So first up, how to build your own, check that out. See if you want to build your own or number two, you can just use the one that we pre-built for you. You can even edit it so that it makes sense and works best for your business. So that's all there is, nothing more than that. So stick around and join me as we build cash flow forecasts. Okay, so here are the steps to create your own simple cash flow forecast. Step one is we're just going to start with the opening cash balance. So I'm going to type in opening cash balance, <laughs> and then I'm going to widen this column so that it fits in there. And that is the start of our cash flow forecast. Second step is we want to estimate our cash inflows. So let's create a heading with a bold cell. So I hit control B and I'm going to type in cash inflows, and then we can add in whatever cash inflows we want. I'm just going to keep it really simple and say sales, grants, and other revenue. And then let's say we also might have some loans. So we'll say loan proceeds as our third one. You can add some others if you want, but I'm just going to call it that for now. And I'm going to type in total cash inflows after I have made the cell bold there. So total cash inflows, and that is going to serve as our whole section for cash inflows. Next we'll do cash outflows and that's same story. We're going to start with bold. We'll call it cash outflows. And then let's enter in some categories here. I like to keep it pretty simple. So I'm going to go in, maybe add 10 or so operating expenses, and then a few other types of cash outflows as well. So we'll start with advertising, uh, similar, it's, it's marketing as well. So we call it and marketing. Often we'll have some insurance costs. So let's add insurance. Then let's go with office supplies. That can be like pretty miscellaneous as well. Professional services is next. Then you probably need a place to occupy. So let's say rent and occupancy costs, whatever those end up being. It could be like property taxes, or if you actually pay a mortgage, it could be money going out. Let's do salaries and wages next. I always find this is a big one for me, but depending on what kind of business you have, software, and I guess other subscriptions as well is another big one. Let's call the next one travel and transportation. So that could be vehicle expenses. It could be traveling by air, whatever you have there. It could be accommodations if you're traveling places. I will go utilities next. Actually, you know what? Let's not do that. We've got utilities under rent and occupancy costs. We can try and keep things as simple as possible here. If you want, you can add more, but I would uh, limit these as much as possible. So that's a pretty good amount of operating expenses. You'll see if you look at the template that I built already, I included a few more types of costs and I also broke it down into operating costs and other cash outflows. But in this case, I just want to show you how to make a very simple cash flow forecasting template. Our last three will have loan repayments. I'm going to put in purchases of equipment. So it's like computer equipment, vehicles, whatever other kinds of equipment your business might need. And then lastly, we'll call it tax payments. So if you have in income tax to pay or sales tax, that can be included there. So let's look at that for now. And then I'm going to bold this cell and I'm going to write total cash outflows. So there we have our cash inflows and our total cash outflows and opening cash balance. I'll make that bold as well. So we're going to have opening cash plus cash inflows minus cash outflows equals our closing cash balance. And that's really the number we want to look at. We're going to see what we start with, what comes in, what goes out, and then what we're left with at the end. This is a great starting point. I'm going to add in some formulas that will help us to uh, calculate this for us. So we'll start with cash inflows. So for total cash inflows, I'm going to type in equals sum and then the left bracket, and then I'll highlight the cells that I want to add up before closing off the brackets and hitting enter. So now you can see zero plus zero plus zero equals zero. And we'll do the same thing for cash outflows. We'll go equals sum left bracket highlight the cells we want to add up, close the brackets, and we get zero again. And then lastly, we want to find our closing cash balance. So that is going to equal opening cash plus total cash inflows minus total cash outflows. So I used a minus sign, meaning that every other number we enter needs to be a positive number. So we have opening plus inflows minus outflows equals our closing cash balance. And that's one period that we've just created under this first column. And so let's start maybe labeling these columns. So I'm going to call this first month, January, and then I'm going to type in February 
and I'm not going to type the rest of it in. I'm going to highlight both of those months, grab this little handle here and drag it all the way over to M. So I get January through December. So I'm going to forecast for a full year. I can also do the same thing for all of my formulas. So I'm going to grab the little handle and drag it all the way across. Same story for the cash outflows and same story for the cash balance. So now we can enter in an opening cash balance here. But what we're going to need to do last is we also need to make sure that this closing cash balance becomes our opening cash for February. So if we type in equals and click our January closing cash balance, we're going to pull in whatever number is in that cell. And if we do this draggy thing all the way across, we're going to grab closing cash balances for every single month and they'll become the opening cash balances for the next month. So let's take a look at this and we can see if we had, let's say $50,000 for our opening cash balance, we can now see that that gets carried forward to the closing balances and the opening balances for the following month. Next up, let's run a few scenarios. So we can populate these fields here to estimate our cash inflows and our cash outflows. Let's just say, for example, this is a startup and we expect to only have $5,000 in months one through three in sales, but then we expect to get a few more clients and we're going to start making a little bit more. So we'll say 7,500 for a couple months before we again expect to get some more clients. And let's say we start making 10,000 a month for the rest of the year. And we can start to see our cash balance goes up and up and up, but that's because we've only added our inflows for now. So let's take a look at our other outflows and see what we might have. Let's say we need to spend some money to make some money. So advertising and marketing, we're going to call that 1500 in a month. Insurance, let's just say it's 200 a month. Office supplies, who knows, this is going to fluctuate. So we're going to enter a nominal amount there. Professional services, let's say we have lawyers and accountants and we pay them monthly. So we're going to spend about, let's say, 750 a month for that. Rent and occupancy costs, this, depending on what kind of business you have, might be your largest expense. Let's say it's 4200 a month. Salaries and wages, well, we don't have anybody employed yet, so we're going to call that zero. Software expenses, there's always some of that. Let's say that's 200 a month. Travel and transportation, we don't know yet. Let's take a look and see as we go and just leave that blank for now. Loaner payments, no. Purchases of equipment, maybe later on in a month eight, we'll have some equipment to buy, so let's add that in here. This is all going to be based on your own assumptions, so if it sounds like I'm just kind of making stuff up, it's because I, I definitely am. So there we have some expenses and I'm going to drag these all the way across just like I had before so that they go through every single month and we can start to see that it's hard to read. And so I'm going to make that better. I'm going to highlight all these numbers. I'm going to click format number and then I like the financial formatting. I find it's easier to read and I'm going to remove two decimals. So I'm going to click this twice and now it's already starting to get easier to read. If we add some lines, we can start to see where these subtotals are. And I do find that this really helps as well. So we've got total cash inflows, total cash outflows that starts to get easier to see. And you can see at the start, our inflows are only 5,000, but our outflows are 7,000 and our cash is going down. And then as we start to earn more income, but not increase our outflows, our cash flow balance is going to start to climb back up. So this is helpful. Let's say you had much more in the way of expenses. You'd be able to see a bit of a runway for how much cash you have over the months and how much you might need going forward. So let's say we did actually start paying people a salary right from the beginning. That's going to eat into our cash pretty quickly. So if we drag this across, we'll see, okay, we're getting pretty low and we're going to run out of cash by the end of the year. So we definitely need to make arrangements for either a loan or to just make more money when it comes to sales. So this is all you really need to do. Run a quick scenario, update it as you need to. You can even, if you like, have a look at it every single month and you can update your opening cash balance so that it is actually your true cash balance. So let's say that you forecasted this, but something else happened and your opening cash balance was actually 48,000. You can just type over it and it's going to carry forward and update all of the other cells because you've linked them all in that process that I just showed making this spreadsheet. So that's it. That's creating your cash flow forecast. You are going to start with opening cash add your inflows, subtract your outflows, and then you can implement your different scenarios for your cash inflows and outflows and make sure to update it regularly. And if you want a ready-made cash flow forecast template that you can use, you can enter your name and email address in the form and we'll send you a link to this one. So when you click the link, you're actually going to get to this templated preview page. And so you can see I've got two tabs. There's a service business and a product business version. They're very similar, but all you have to do is click use template It'll create a copy of the template for you to use, and it'll open it up in your Google account. And then you can choose whether you want to use the service business one or the product business one. And the product business one, the only difference is that I've added a cost of goods sold section. So you'll have sales minus cost of goods sold minus ongoing costs, whereas the service business has sales minus ongoing costs. So we just skips that cost of goods sold section for the service business.
And if we scroll back up to the top, you'll see we have a couple of steps here for how to create your cash flow forecast. You'll start by only entering data into the blue cells. If you do enter data into the white cells, it can break some formulas, but you'll get a warning if you click enter. It's going to say, hey, heads up, you're, you're trying to edit something that shouldn't be changed accidentally. You can click OK and actually make the change. You can even click don't show this for five minutes if you want to make a bunch of changes. I'm just going to cancel because I don't want to break the formulas here in this spreadsheet. Basically, your first step is to enter some details about your business. We'll call it Paul's business and the forecast year. You can choose that. It doesn't do anything to the spreadsheet. It just tells you what year you're looking at. Whatever the first month that you want to forecast, just use that from the drop down menu. And that's going to actually change the months along the top here. So I'm just going to say we're going calendar 2025. So we'll go January through December 2025 here. And then we can enter our opening cash balance. Let's say it was $25,000. That will populate that opening cash flow balance in that first cell in January there. You'll notice that it also populates the rest of the months, but that's because those are calculated down here. The closing cash flow balance for January then becomes the opening balance for February. And that pattern repeats itself over and over. And you'll see these change as I enter data into our inflows and outflows section. So our next step is to actually enter in data for our sales figures. And we're really going to estimate this. This is based on whatever assumptions you have for your business. So this is going to be a fictional example. And I'll just start entering data to show you how it works. Let's say we think we're going to make 15,000 in sales in the first month. And then maybe we have a secondary sales type you can type in here. I've added a few sort of blank ones to just easily change. Let's call it merch. If we sell merch at our store, then let's say we had about $750 in merch sales. So our total projected monthly revenue for the month of January is going to be 15,750. And then we can scroll down and start entering our ongoing cash outflows. So I'll just start typing things in again. This is going to be totally dependent on your given situation. And you can add some extra expense types here if you want to as well. So I'll just speed this up and I'm going to populate this with some fictional information. So you can see there, I've got some estimates for my January ongoing costs. And as it happens, I've got outgoing cash of around $15,000. So my net cash from operations in this example was only $630. That was my revenue minus my operating costs on a cash basis equals our net cash from operations of 630. I can then enter any other cash inflow. So let's say that we loaned or we received a loan to the company for $20,000. We can add that in. That's going to add that to our closing cash balance down at the bottom. If we sold some assets or equipment or if we had some other types of cash inflows, we can enter those in there. And lastly, we'll enter our cash outflow. So let's say we had to start making repayments on this loan in the first month. We can enter those here. If we bought some equipment, we can enter that detail here. So let's say we did need some equipment and that's why we got out that loan. So we had uh, $16,000 in equipment purchases. Our other outflows are now 17,000. So our forecasted closing cash balance is 28,630 for the month of January. And you can see there, step five, the sheet will calculate your forecasted closing cash balance. And once you've actually gone through January, your results are likely going to be different. So this is optional, but if you want, you can update this every single month and you can update your actual closing cash balance here so that it populates the February opening balance. So let's say that our actual cash balance was 31,000, type it in and it's gonna update that at the top. So this is just an extra little row that you can use if you did wanna update the actual balances every single month to see what your updated forecast is gonna look like. What I would do then is I would continue estimating or forecasting my sales and my costs for every single month. And that's going to give you a good idea of what your closing cash flow balance is and will help you understand what your funding needs might be. Or maybe if you have a cash surplus, you can take more draws or you can also do some scenario planning. So you can plan if you have maybe a expected 20% drop in sales in one month, you can forecast that out like that. So I'll just populate this quickly with some details just to show you what that might look like. So there we go. I've made up to numbers. Sales are increasing, costs are slowly increasing, and we had a big purchase of equipment here and we've been repaying our loan. So you can see that cash is looking okay. We've got, you know, forecasting about steady cash flow until we hit the month of July when we had that big purchase that we needed to make. 
and we can see, oh, there's a forecasting and negative cash balance. And that's where things kind of come into play. You can actually estimate when you might need to go get some more cash or when you might need to do a shareholder deposit to cover a shortfall, if that's the case. Hopefully that's not the case, but that's what these are for. It's really, it's just a tool for estimating your cash balance so that you can plan ahead. You can go ahead, grab a copy of this. Hopefully it becomes helpful and hopefully it gives you a better idea of what to expect for the year. So there we have it. We have DIY cash flow forecasting and a ready-made cash flow forecasting template for you. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. The more subscribers we have, the more people we can help. And that is our main mission at Avalon Accounting. And if you want another template to check out, please have a look at, I don't know if it's there or it's there. There's going to be a link to a video that shows how to use our bookkeeping template that we made. And we found actually thousands of people have used this. And I reach out to most of them and follow up and I get a lot of really positive comments on it. So check it out if you need a bookkeeping template that's simple to use and it's free and you can do it in Google Sheets. But anyway, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.